can change the world. Boy, it sure is a busy time here. We're catching up with Brian Baird, former member of U.S. Congress. Brian, welcome back. Great, glad to be with you. And you have something really interesting that's happening here in Washington State, thanks to you. Well, we are in, uh, hopefully in late January, we hope to launch a new initiative called Three American Questions. And the issue really is this. Young people and old people all around the country, people are disillusioned about the political process, and yet there are fundamental, really existential issues. The debt, what are we going to do to deal with this mounting debt, and climate change. And frankly, the third issue is people have lost faith in their government. They've yeah. lost confidence. So we've created an initiative called Three American Questions. It's nonpartisan. It's not affiliated with any candidate or party. And the idea is to get voters to say to candidates, if you don't address these three questions directly and honestly, don't expect my support. Wow, what are the three questions? Three questions are, one, what are you going to do, the, we ask the politician, and what are you going to ask us to do to address climate change and ocean acidification? That's one. Uh -huh. Two, what are you going to do and what will you ask us to do to address the debt, to fix the debt? And three, what are you going to do and what will you ask us to do to restore the confidence of the American people in their elected government? Wow, those are fantastic questions. Uh, are they are they're geared towards candidates for federal office? Mostly for federal office, but you know, at the state level, there are things can be done on all of these. And there's a symbol. The symbol is this. It's a reverse of the OK symbol. The oh, idea okay. is we want to hold this hand up and say, I have three questions for you. And the premise is, this should not be a partisan issue. There are good ideas and good people on both sides. But what cannot happen is for someone to say the problems don't exist or to give solutions that aren't really solutions. So who's this geared towards? Well, it's really geared at, my initial thought was young people. We've got so many, you know, early voting age young people or even younger kids. I've talked to this to 16-year-olds, for example, 15-year-olds, you say, you're right, I'm so worried about the future of this country and I can't do anything about it. Well, now they can. With three American questions, they talk to their parents, their grandparents, their friends, their neighbors, and say, please don't vote for anyone who won't give honest answers to this. And on our website, you'll be able to see what the candidates have posted. You'll be able to see people endorsing uh, candidates or, or positions. We're not putting forward ourselves, though I have obviously a lot of ideas about what the solutions might be. Our goal is to give voters a platform to say we insist you address this and then give candidates a platform to say here's how I would do it. And hopefully those pair up. Do you think that's enough? Well, it's a start. You know, right now we have some candidates running for uh, for federal office, the uh, president on down, who are denying climate change. We have others whose proposals will blow up the federal debt. Well, you can't do that if you really care about the future of this country. You must address these. And uh, frankly, when you look at the quality of debate, I hear and I talk to fellow electeds who say, look, the American people are despairing about their government. They believe it's so partisan, so vitriolic, so bitter that nothing's getting done. So asking people, what will you do? And what will you ask us, the, the public, the citizens to do, is a start. Yeah. Uh, how is this organized? I mean, how do, how do people join the group? We'll be posting this. We'll launch our website in late January. It's not there yet. Uh, but we've got the URL reserved, etc. We're building it now. It's bipartisan. My dear friend Bob Inglis from South Carolina, former member of Congress, who's put a conservative response to climate change, meaning by that he absolutely understands climate change is real, but he wants to take a conservative approach to solving that. So through, through uh, revenue neutral tax on carbon. So he doesn't want to raise taxes, but he w does want to put a price on carbon. So Bob and I are dear friends. We serve together. It's a nonpartisan organization. We're getting endorsements from celebrities and, and, and politicians and average citizens from all walks of life. And when we launch in January, then people can sign on. And we think it can go viral and go pretty quickly to where politicians will realize this could be the deter determining factor in their elections. And then you have their attention. Now, I know you've, you've been involved, obviously, in Congress. You've been in, in professional business of your own. You also have work with college students. What makes you think this will work today? Yeah, great question. Well, people are looking for something to do. They're saying, I care about this country. I want to do something, but I don't know what it is. The second thing is, many of the organizations that talk about the debt or talk about climate, they just haven't connected. They talk way up here. Right, right. I can't and, understand what they're saying. They can't understand. We are saying it fairly simple. Let me give you an example. The debt, if we don't solve the debt by the year 2025, all 
discretionary spending, which we currently spend on defense, on education, on transportation, on medical research, on foreign aid, all of that money will go just to pay the interest. There will be nothing left but interest on the debt. That's not sustainable. No. The same is true of climate. We've got to help people understand simple facts about climate. One, scientists have known for decades that if you put CO2 in the atmosphere, it retains more heat. That's proven fact. They've known if you put it in the water, the water becomes more acidic. Well, last year alone, we put some 70 trillion pounds of CO2 in the air. Oh my gosh. One year, 70 plus trillion pounds. Now, if that's the case, are we seeing the water become more acidic? The top scientists in the world are right here in the Seattle area. Absolutely, our coast is more acidic than it used to be. And, and, and so the, the debate is not about whether or not there is climate change. It uh, is it, real. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, the fact of the matter is that it is. It is. Regardless and, of who caused it. Well, in the top 10 hottest years in history, that since recorded history, since 1998. The 10 hottest years. 19, or 2015, probably the hottest year on record, 2014, very hot year. We've got to get the voters to say, look, this is not an if, this is real. How will you deal with it? And then importantly, how will you ask us to deal with it? It's time for voters to demand that politicians ask us to put some skin in the game. So the third question is, what are we going to do to restore confidence in government? And that should not be so hard. It should be basic things like, I will show respect and fairness to the other side of the aisle. Oh, I'll give that's time, not going to happen. I'll give them time to read legislation and offer amendments. I'll be honest in presenting my facts and in responding to the other person's facts. This, and I'll hopefully, eventually, I think we need to reform campaign finance and deal with how we, we draw our congressional boundaries. Those are common sense things that the American people understand. And if we work together, we can solve them. So, Brian, what's the name of the organization again? Three American Questions. Three American Questions. I can hardly wait. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Take care. Thank you.